ribs. Wait, no, I meant these ribs. What if I told you that these long, thin, lightweight bones could possibly be considered one of the most important group of bones in the entire body? Yes, we all know that these bones form the thoracic cage, providing protection for our heart and lungs. But did you know that without our rib cage, our lungs would not be able to take in even a single breath of air? <gasps> I'll explain why this is another day, but for now, let's just agree that these 24 bony rods are some of the most underestimated members of the human skeleton. Although the curved form and ability to flex makes each of the rib bones resistant to fractures, like all bones, a rib will break if it's hit hard enough. In fact, fractures to these bones are commonly seen in trauma-related incidents such as motor accidents, sports-related injuries, assault, or simply undergoing a hard fall. Interestingly enough, though, despite rib fractures being common, one thing that is not commonly seen is a dislocated rib. Yes, despite whatever your internet searches might tell you, dislocation, or subluxation of a rib, is actually an extremely rare event, even among the types of incidents mentioned a moment ago. Why is this? What kind of joints connect the ribs to the rest of the body, and why are they so robust? Well, we're going to find out the answer to this and much more right now as we explore the costovertebral joints. We all know that the vertebral column is formed from a series of rather irregular bones known as vertebrae, each of which articulate or form joints with its immediate neighbour above and below at intervertebral joints. One feature which specifically sets the thoracic vertebrae apart from other members of the vertebral column is the fact that they possess additional articular surfaces, which are present in order to form articulations or joints with the ribs. This joining of the thoracic vertebrae with the ribs as a whole allows for the formation of the thoracic cage. In our tutorial today, we'll be working systematically through the anatomy of the joints found between the thoracic vertebrae and ribs, first looking at the bony framework, followed by the supporting ligaments. We will have a look at the joints in both typical arrangements and atypical arrangements, as there is some variation at different thoracic levels. And finally, we'll finish up with some clinical points on the costo-vertebral joints. Before we start, let's have a quick look at this illustration to introduce ourselves to these joints. And I do say joints because there are actually two joints that are formed when the ribs articulate with the vertebrae. And these are the joints between the vertebral body and the head of the rib here and the joint that the tubercle of the rib makes with the transverse process of the vertebra over here. Now, don't be overwhelmed by all the terminology here. We'll be looking at these again later on, but it's worth keeping in mind at this point that there are two very separate joints that we're going to talk about. So let's get started with the bony elements to provide some structure. So we've established that there are two bones which play a role in the formation of the costovertebral joints. And these are the thoracic vertebrae, and as we've mentioned before, the ribs. So let's take a look at the vertebrae first. So here we're looking at a typical thoracic vertebra from a superior view, and we can see some characteristic features to tell us that this is indeed a member of this particular vertebral series. This video is not over yet. Continue watching now the full video at kenhub.com. We have lots more videos like this one available to our premium members on our website, not to mention all the fun quizzes, related articles, and atlas sections. So click on the button in the middle to watch the full-length video and master anatomy.